this is something where there is a lot of content here that um, in a in a physics class. So a lot of what we cover in these two slides are what I would spend the uh, first four weeks of in a regular semester of a physics 4C. So um, in terms of just topics coverage, there's a lot. And um, we are necessarily um, uh, staying at more conceptual level and uh, not bringing in math that we don't have to bring in. But I, I think it's uh, worth going through. And um, it, uh, necessarily a very small selection of what we can talk about light that's relevant for astronomy. And I think that leaves out something here that um, comes up, I briefly mentioned it at the end, yeah, light other properties. And here, I think your textbook didn't even really, well, well, this your textbook covers the inverse of square law. Um, this also because it's relevant for spectroscopy and uh, this your textbook doesn't even really cover it. I think it does uh, have the word the photon occurring somewhere in the section somewhere, but didn't have any uh, pictures I could use. So I got had to get this picture from college of physics textbook. Um, this is the part of the light property that relates to quantum mechanics and it's fascinating, <laughs> but not necessarily um, at the core set of topics that we need to spend a lot of time on. Uh, yeah, that we won't get into. So, so highlighting what we won't really spend a lot of time on, I just want you to um, highlight some key properties that, um, that you will see in the astronomy context that's uh, relevant for other things that you are going to learn about stars. This is in fact how, how we know uh, various different properties of stars, you know, the kind of things that you look up in, you can look up in database. And then, you know, the first question you should be asking is how do these people know all these things about these stars that are light years away? And we, so, these properties of light that we cover in submodule 2.3 is a how. That's the answer to that question. So, um, so yeah, let me um, go through these. Oh, yeah. that's just a pretty picture. <laughs> so, um, with in talking about light, the uh, number one thing to understand is that it's a wave. And I think uh, most people have a, a good visual image of a wave, um, especially if you think of things like water waves. You've seen water waves, you know what water waves look like. And uh, that's a good visual image. It, and um, what I would say is that wave as a phenomenon is a far more general phenomenon than water waves, than sound waves, than light. So whenever, whenever you are talking about waves, there are certain things you can talk about that happens to be uh, relevant and useful information about the waves for us uh, experimenters, observers to know. The biggest thing would be the wave propagation speed and light has a very special property that I'll talk about in a little bit. And these two properties, they relate to what's called the periodic waves. That's why uh, it has to be periodic for you to, for us to be able to talk, talk about frequency. And once you know frequency of a wave and its propagation speed, you can relate that to wavelength. Um, so these are the general properties of wave that's gonna be relevant whenever you're dealing with the waves, whether it's light wave, whether it's a sound wave, and I guess technically water waves, although they are not per se as interesting as light waves. And sound waves, even though they are interesting um, in the context of astronomy, you know, space is a vacuum, sound waves don't travel through vacuum. So you can't really get sound waves from a distant star. So it's not quite as relevant for astronomy. Um, at least, uh, yeah, it has a more limited use than light waves do. Um, I, I don't think I remember all these slides. So I actually need to flip through. Yeah, it's a wave. Yeah, can travel through vacuum. That's why light waves are important for astronomy. Uh, yeah, and this is uh, the 
uh, important, useful, interesting feature of light wave is that it moves very fast, but not infinite, about 300 million meters per second. I guess you need some context to, to make sense of that. The, the cars that we drive, they um, trying to remember the conversion factors. I think on freeway, those move at about 30 meters per second. That's uh, the usual speed of cars. So 300 million meters per second, that's about, about uh, 10 million times faster than cars. That's how fast the light moves. And um, and it's a, it's a constant speed when it's through a vacuum. And there's a more interesting story behind that. This is how we precisely define it. And um, because uh, it, uh, it's a fast speed and it's a constancy gives us a kind of a measuring stick. So in astronomy, it's very common to use light, speed of light to measure distances. Um, so the way we do is, you know, it, it's uh, the speed times uh, the amount of time. You, you can see it kind of here, you know, 300 million meters per second. That's the speed. So when you multiply it to one second, that gives you a length of 300 million meters. So in astronomy, when you want to measure 300 million meters, instead of saying 300 million meters, which is much too large and have, I have no, I at least have no concept of what that even looks like, but someone can tell me something is one light second away. And I, then I have some sense of what that's like. And if I don't hear this moon is at about one light second from earth. And um, so I can, whenever I need to, I can convert this to about 300 million meters. Um, and sun is much farther than moon. It's at about eight light minutes from Earth, or I guess that's about 400 uh, light seconds from Earth. 400, eh, sounds close enough. Sun is about at three times, 300 times the distance uh, from Earth to moon. So, um, so we use the speed of light to measure distances. Mm -hmm. You can do it within the solar system. It's not quite as common. We do it more with the distant stars. Let me see if the next slide relates to that. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, so with the distant stars, the closest star to us, that's not our sun, is about four light years away. And uh, everything else we use light year to measure distances because that's the natural unit of distance for astronomy, uh, extrasolar astronomy. Um, so that's uh, one important property of light, how fast it moves and how we can use that to measure distances. And it's uh, how we usually express distances in astronomy. Um, let's see here. Yeah, this I think I can defer that to a little bit later. Yeah, this is about waves. You should you know, read through it and <laughs> take some time to understand. Um, and uh, so this is the one place where you are seeing mathematical equations. And you will see this when you do the module and the assignment. I really do try to keep um, algebra <laughs> out of the class. Uh, if, you're, if you feel comfortable al with algebra, you know, if someone asks you to solve this for frequency and you can do it, then great, do it. <laughs> if not, uh, that's kind of why I do it here so that uh, you have a solved for each of those uh, terms there so that if someone gives you the wavelength and frequency and asks you for speed, there it is. Speed is equal to wavelength times frequency. If someone gives you speed and frequency and asks you for wavelength, then there it is. Wavelength is a speed divided by frequency and uh, frequency, so final third of the possible combinations. If someone gives you the speed, and wavelength and asks you for frequency, then that's the combination. And if you feel comfortable with algebra, then you know that all these come from the same expression. You don't have to memorize it as three separate things. But if you're not comfortable with algebra, here it is as three separate things. Um, so this is the part where uh, I think I want you to spend some time on because let's see here. Um, so, one is to uh, talk about the, the, the range of the spectrum because um, this is why I start with the, the saying that light is a wave. 
that's the most uh, in, light is an electromagnetic wave. That's the most important property of light, light, because once you internalize them, then we can think about are is all electromagnetic wave light? Can you reverse this? And uh, we physicists, scientists, astronomers tend to do that. And as we do that, what you have to be careful is when we talk about light, I think we are used to thinking about the visible light. That's this rainbow color here from red to violet. And when an astronomer talks about light or electromagnetic wave, they are talking about all this range, including the ones outside the visible. There's uh, ones like ultraviolet and infrared that you might feel more comfortable with, infrared like thermometers, ultraviolet, you have sunscreen to protect you from ultraviolet rays of the sun. And I think what many people are not quite as used to is thinking of all these other things as light as well. X-rays, like the dental X-rays, that's a kind of light. And gamma rays, I guess the most uh, pop culture friendly reference is the Hulk and gamma ray exposure, which has nothing to do with actual science. <laughs> but that's also a type of electromagnetic wave that's uh, in its uh, fundamental nature, very similar to visible light. Um, because of their very short wavelength and high frequency, they uh, interact with the matter quite differently, but at their very fundamental base level uh, property, gamma rays and X-rays are like a visible light. It's electromagnetic wave. And I think a microwave and radio, you know what those are from everyday life. And uh, they are also a form of light, at least the uh, uh, electromagnetic wave. So at the very fundamental level, these are, um, they, they travel a speed of light because it's light. Um, so, so a lot of astronomy involves uh, uh, working with this entire uh, range. With the telescopes that are on Earth, very often, well, the, the very first uh, region that we look at is the visible, because that's uh, where our eyes are adapted to. That's what we are used to looking at. But there are plenty of uh, ground-based observatories that are radio telescopes that um, uh, use certain features that are unique to radio uh, telescopy to uh, make better measurements there. And a lot of the other regions, infrared and X-ray uh, um, observation, they have to be done in space. That's what these satellites are there for to represent that. Um, and uh, this is an example of how the same region of sky, this is the constellation Orion, which you can see, I think, outside your sky right now, if you go out and look. And is it dark enough? can't tell. <laughs> um, so this is the visible um, portion that might seem more familiar. These uh, three stars are the Orion's belt. And um, the rest are, you know, if you <laughs> have seen this before, then you might be able to recognize this drum shaped thing. And um, it looks very different at different wavelengths. So this is the, I think, infrared. Uh, yeah, in the infrared light, it's showing the glowing dust, the interstellar gas that you will hear discussed in uh, module four. And I think here it's showing X-ray sources like pulsars and whatnot. And um, where you have the brightest the visible light, necessarily where you have brightest X-ray sources. And those, um, and I think we'll also talk about some uh, types of X-ray sources in module four. So uh, these are. Uh, uh, these different uh, parts of the electromagnetic wave spectrum reveal different information about uh, the galaxy universe that's out there. And this is uh, the biggest piece I wanted to spend some time on. Um, this is uh, one of the uh, biggest <laughs> source of information. And uh, you might have read in um, things related to astronomy that talk about temperature of a star. And you might wonder, like, how do we, I mean, you might even have heard of us, someone talking about the surface temperature of the sun at around 5,000 or 6,000 Kelvin. And 
I mean, you know, we've never been to the sun, so how do we know what the temperature of the sun's surface is like, much less um, surface temperature of the stars that are far away. And this is a, uh, uh, this is black body radiation. This is um, one of the great triumph of uh, modern physics that, uh, in uh, triumph of quantum mechanics, it's one of the, um, uh, accomplishments of early quantum mechanics when Max Planck, uh, do I, sorry, I need to <laughs> look right to the future slides. Uh, that's just a demo. Do I not talk about Max Planck? Huh? Well, <laughs> so one of the early accomplishments in quantum mechanics was when Max Planck figured out um, an explanation for this uh, experimental law, which is that as an object gets hotter, it emits more and more light, electromagnetic wave, for, and um, the wavelength where the maximum intensity is emitted, it goes from, so this is the infrared range, and uh, 2000 Kelvin is already pretty hot, it's like red hot glowing iron. Um, as it gets hotter and hotter, the the wavelength where the maximum intensity is emitted, it gets shorter and shorter on, until at around the, the sun's temperature, you get the maximum wavelength, maximum intensity at the wavelength of around the green. That's, uh, uh, that's the, 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 the spectrum of the sun. And, um, and I guess, uh, so I have this uh, figure, which is the figure from the textbook, but this might be a place where it's good to use the simulation to kind of show you how things change. I mean, it's still simulation. If you, something that's, if you want something that's real, you can take a look at the next slide where it's an actual demo and there's a recorded um, thing of actual, um, actual red hot glowing sphere that, um, that that your uh, the camera is looking at through a device that separates out the spectrum. So you can look at the real thing there. Uh, the nice thing about simulation is that it's easier. <laughs> so <laughs> let me show you with the easier simulation um, what the um, how black body spectrum, how spectrum of light that we see from an object that we name black body, as in it's a body that uh, emits light because of its temperature and no other reason. And um, so this simulation, which you can access yourself, if you wanna access it yourself, it's at fed.colorado.edu. And I got to it by going to simulation physics and they have a lot of interesting simulations, 100 or so just the physics alone. So I deselect all of them and just go to quantum phenomena and to their black body spectrum. So this is the simulation. Uh, it, the preset, initial preset is at the temperature of the sun. And um, when it, so this is about the temperature of the light bulb. And this is why the uh, usual incandescent and light bulbs are so inefficient because only a small fraction of its emitted energy is in the visible. It wastes a lot of the light in the heat in the infrared. Uh, a lot of you might have LED light bulbs these days where you get rid of the heat, you just have a visible that approximates it. It's a lot better. <laughs> um, and uh, the, so even Earth emits electromagnetic radiation. So this is at around the room temperature of 300 Kelvin. Um, so this is any uh, regular objects at home. Okay, so it doesn't emit much visible light. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> but if I make the wavelength a little bit longer, it picks at longer wavelength, about 10 microns here. And it's, this is still in the infrared region. And this is how um, infrared thermometers work. They, you know, I actually don't know the full detail. I, I would imagine they measure uh, at what wavelength your the infrared emission is at the maximum. And there's a law that relates that wavelength to the temperature of the body uh, called Wien's displacement, Wien's dis displacement law. But um, so you can see it here, as I make this temperature higher, you will see this peak uh, shift to leftward to the shorter wavelength. And, and it also you know, blows up. So <laughs> it blows up quite quickly. It goes, yeah. So. 
So this is something that we know from uh, fundamental physics. This is uh, uh, explaining and well, exploring and explaining all this was the biggest, uh, one of the biggest accomplishments of physics in the 20th century. And uh, that's uh, one of the foundational pieces of the uh, astronomical observation and how we can infer properties of distant stars from the light alone. So, yeah, so that's the biggest thing. And there's, um, so that's the black body spectrum. This is a spectrum that depends only on temperature, nothing else. Any hot object, so whether it's earth, light bulb, sun, oh, do I want to, let me just reset it. <laughs> My zoom is all fucked. Um, sun, or there are stars that are much hotter than the sun, like Sirius A there, that's at twice the temperature of the sun. And, uh, it peaks at a wavelength that's outside the visible, but you know it still has emission in the visible range. So we'll see it here, something like a bluish white star, and and this uh, black body spectrum alone tells us uh, a lot about the, the temperature of the star, and the second major feature that tells us about the property or composition of the star is the, the discrete spectra. And um, so you will see more of this, I think again in module four, <laughs> um, but it, this a discrete spectra tells us, it also gives us more information about temperature and composition of the star. Let me leave that there uh, other than that. This is like a fingerprinting for different elements. So present of, presence of particular line spectra tells us that um, this light that we are observing involved this particular element or at lower temperatures, even molecules. Um, yeah, spectrum of the sun, and this is the spectrum of the sun. And uh, th this is, um, oh, and some of these, um, uh, spectroscopy involves not even just not only the stars but interstellar gases as well. Uh, some of these measurements are done in microwave. I think uh, you might have heard of something called a 21 centimeter line. Uh, centimeter line. That's uh, uh, that's uh, um, an important one for um, astronomical observation. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, what else do I want to talk about light? So um, this, uh, uh, so submodule 2.3 um, kind of binds, uh, brings it together in one place, uh, a lot of different things about light that um, that's useful for astronomy. And uh, I think uh, what I covered in the last uh, 20, 30 minutes or so is overview of that with some additional explanations.